And we're back. Our guest on this section, as I told you earlier, is Fred Jones. Fred, good to have you, my man. Hey, Sam. How you doing today, man? I'm doing fine. It's, it's good to meet another Jones. Hey, that's Jones boys, man. We got to stick together, okay? I know. Somehow we're related, you and I. <laughs> Fred, you're with uh, One Tulsa. And before we get into why you're here, let's talk a little bit about One Tulsa. What is it? Well, uh, One Tulsa is a company that I formed about eight years ago. Uh, I was a former uh, MLK Parade uh, chair, and uh, some events came along that I kind of wanted to do. Um, so uh, I formed uh, the company One Tulsa. I was sitting talking to uh, one of my friends who's a, a local banker, and uh, you know, he just thought, hey, man, it's just kind of time for you to branch out and you know, kind of start doing your own stuff. I was connected to uh, some great entities, but uh, I just wanted to, uh, uh, I'm on the first generation of magnet school students, uh, 1972. Uh, we were uh, 12 whites and 12 blacks placed at Burroughs Elementary. Um, and, uh, you know, I've always kept that, you know, one race, the human race, um, idealism and a thought process in my mind. So I thought, you know, hey, here's an opportunity to, uh, form one Tulsa and uh, do my part um, in, uh, you know, adding diversity and inclusion uh, in the world. You know, uh, one of the things that, that drew me to this interview when I found out you were coming was what you're putting together and what uh, one Tulsa is involved in. And if you don't mind, I'm going to step out just a little bit and kind of bring the folks in so that they'll know where we're headed. You're putting together an album with the sounds of uh, Black Wall Street that go back a hundred years. And as I understand it, that's to commemorate uh, the uh, the massacre that occurred uh, right. on Black Wall Street. Bring us up to speed on that. What do you, well, what do you mean by the sounds of Black Wall Street? Uh, sound of Black Wall Street, uh, the 1921 uh, project, uh, is something that I've probably been working on about four years. Um, I had the opportunity, it was a 40 day opportunity of forming a relationship with Steve McKeever, uh, who was the president at Motown. My former, uh, uh, my high school teammate, college roommate, and one of my best friends, uh, the late Wayman Tisdale, uh, was a great basketball player, but also a jazz musician. Uh, and uh, when he signed with Motown, of course, it afforded me the opportunity to meet a lot of people in the entertainment industry. Um, so in meeting Steve, uh, that relationship, uh, you know, cultivated over some 20 plus years. And yeah. Uh, yeah. I worked with him at every label he had, uh, including the Hidden Beach label, which is the 1921 uh, label, uh, Hidden Beach slash Universal Records. Um, so. I just decided that I wanted to uh, get a group of individuals uh, who were like-minded uh, artists uh, who just wanted to inspire, uh, not, you know, fuss, uh, you know, and, and talk about the things that are going wrong, but try to just encourage the world today um, to uh, a better place. Uh, music is one place that we can all meet and all uh, sit down at the same table and listen to or go to a concert. Um, it just uh, it's just a great platform. So uh, I've I've got several artists from Tulsa. You know, national artists are coming in daily. Um, you know, and we're just excited about uh, you know moving in a positive uh, direction for uh, as the commemoration approaches. Well, I, I have to tell you, there are a couple of things about this, and you already know that uh, Tulsa was a stop on the Underground Railroad. Right. You also know that Tulsa played a role, and I mean a strong role, in the, the, in the migration of jazz. Right. From New Orleans and down from Kansas City. Right. Additionally, additionally there, there, there was a strong influence of, of gospel music. Right. And all of that started to come together uh, you know, with with jazz, the Underground Railroad, uh, the influence from different parts of the country. Right. What evolved influenced music all over the world from right here. 
Exactly, exactly. You know, one of the great things about the project is uh, I've been able to contact uh, and place on the record uh, two uh, uh, Black Wall Streets, Deaton Greenwoods, uh, elder musicians in uh, Washington Rucker, um, who's 84. Um, and uh, we've got a, a, a interview that he and I did in the studio that we're going to launch on uh, Thanksgiving, uh, where he talks a lot about um, you know, the influence of jazz uh, from Oklahoma and the gospel influences and the different things uh, that we, uh, you know, some history that I never knew, uh, you know, even having a musical background. Uh, another, uh, and I call him a young man, is Mr. Ernie Fields. Uh, he's 90 years old and he's going to, we're going to do a special rendition of Lift Every Voice and Sing uh, with Majesty Pearson, one of our great young singers from Tulsa, who's uh, got national acclaim, national platforms. Um, and it's just wonderful talking to, you know, Mr. Fields or, or Mr. Rucker, man. They just take me back, you know, and, and uh, it, it's just an honor to have a 90 year old and an 84 year, 84 year old, you know, on a project with millennials uh, and collaborating. Um, it just bridges uh, the generation gap and brings music uh, together uh, from one, you know, from the 30s and 40s to, you know, 2020. So I'm excited about um, those projects. Mr. Rucker's played all over the world and so has Ernie Fields. Um, and, uh, you know, they've gone from Greenwood to Hollywood to Paris to <laughs> uh, China to Japan and back again. So we're excited about that uh, collaboration with those individuals. You know, it, it speaks to uh, some of the progress we've made, but as I look back, many years ago, I, I did a story about a lady named Cleora Butler. Mm -hmm. Now, Cleora wrote a book called Cleora's Kitchen. Her mother was a cook for the Phillips family, and Cleora came along and learned at her mother's side the fine art of cooking. Right. Now, sit that to one side. And when big bands like Count Basie or Duke Ellington came to town, to do a show, they do a show in South Tulsa first, and the next night they do a show in North Tulsa. And Cleora's mom would cook for all of them, so they had home cooked meal for <laughs> Cleora Butler. And all of Tulsa heard the sound. It's just a shame that they couldn't all come together. You, you know right. what I mean? Right. Well, you know. Um... That was uh, the time uh, that the country was in. Um, and, uh, you know, I talked to uh, uh, one of the uh, great politicians of Tulsa, uh, uh, who's a good friend of mine, white politician. And, you know, he said, you know, after uh, the bombing and the massacre, the greatest uh, tragedy uh, with uh, professional people from, you know, uh, the north side or from deep Greenwood or from that area uh, was that everyone was then, you know, taught to grow up and leave Tulsa. Uh, so, you know, even the rebuilding progress was a struggle uh, for a lot of folk because of the tragedy that happened. You know, people didn't want, didn't think that there was a future here for a long time. Uh, and, you know, we, uh, uh, again, music, you know, uh, played a vital role in rebuilding the confidence of individuals. Uh, you know, uh, so funny, you see so many great athletes, but before a game, they had those headphones on <laughs> and they're listening to whatever inspires them uh, to higher heights. So, you know, th and that's our hope with this project, that it just inspires, um, you know, people all over the world. Uh, sure, and I think, I think without a doubt, you're going you're gonna to make it happen. You're going to make a serious inroads. I got to tell you, my, my both of my daughters graduated from Booker T. Right. And now my grandchildren are at Booker T. And the thing that I see when we're there, or back when you could go to school, uh, you know, safely, yeah. Yeah. Is we see white and black children embracing one another cu culturally. Right. It's, it's almost as though that line first turned gray, now it's it's gone. Right. The young, the young musicians and the young singers 
coming out of Booker T and all the other schools in this area. Right. Are, I mean, it's an astounding amount of talent. Well, um, I, I think that, you know, the city of Tulsa has always been blessed with a, a, a great amount of, you know, uh, talent musically. Uh, and, you know, Booker T has always been, uh, you know, a, a great institution for launching on the careers of some fantastic individuals, as well as, you know, McLean Central and those sure. other schools that are, sure. you know, directly connected to uh, the North Side community. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm a Hornet all day long. Uh, Fred, let me interrupt you. I'm feeling up on my soon, even though we're not having a great season. But um, we're about to run out of time, and I don't want to do that. I want to yeah. really plug your album. Okay. This is, this is going to come out in 2021. 2021. Any idea when? Um, I'll be going out to LA next week. So we're going to uh, sit down with uh, Hidden Beach and Universal. And we're looking uh, probably a couple of weeks before uh, the commemoration, which of course will be uh, May uh, 31st. So we'll be looking sometime in mid May. Uh, we'll start launching stuff and you'll start seeing uh, uh, individuals and, and different entities. We've got, uh, you know, probably 28 tracks. Uh, we've got, uh, you know, some skits that are going to be there. Uh, we've got some spoken word stuff. Um, so it's just going to be exciting, man. So um, going well, to try. We're looking forward to it. And Fred, once it comes out, we want you to come on the show and talk about it. All right. All right. Sounds good, man. Thanks for having me. Thank you. And we appreciate you taking time to visit with us and break a leg. Get in there and do some good. All right. We will. We're all out of time. want to thank all you folks for joining us. and. Uh, We'll see you again next week, but remember, good night and good luck.